Adam Klotz is in the Weather Center. I believe that he might be able to join us. Adam, are you there? Uh, hey, guys. Yeah, I am here. I also didn't feel it. I feel like I was missing out on that. We do have a couple of graphics the, when these sort of things do happen. This is the location just outside of New York City. It's part of the uh, Ramapo fault system. It's the longest crack in the Earth's surface on the eastern side of the country. And when earthquakes do happen, as, and as we know, it's very rare. But this is typically, it has typically been the spot that they have happened. This one was uh, at our current look. Oh, getting ahead of myself here. Let me go back for you guys. Uh, at our current look, this one is a 4.7 magnitude, and it was located uh, just half a mile down, which is incredibly shallow as far as these things go, which is why so many people felt it. Uh, like you, I didn't feel it here in the building, but I have friends who've been texting uh, far out into Brooklyn who felt this. Uh, some folks up in Princeton, New Jersey also felt it. So it's really shallow. It's part of a fault system that is really long. It doesn't move very often, but when it does happen, this is typically where these happen here across the across the Northeast. And I do think that shallow nature is the reason that we've seen so many people reporting and texting and calling so far this morning. Adam, I wanted to ask yes. you about that a little bit more. So we were just talking about the earthquake in Japan was much deeper at 21 miles. Ta Taiwan. I said Japan, sorry, okay. in Taiwan. Um, was 21 miles below. So mm -hmm. this one you're saying is much more shallow, relatively speaking, and that's why people felt it? Yeah, this one is incredibly shallow. Um, the, the most of the ones we get are closer to what you see there in Taiwan. Uh, this was really shallow. It's not a huge number, but for this part of the country, this is a big number. And it is the shallowness. Obviously, the closer you are to the surface, it takes a smaller shake mm -hmm. for us all to notice it. Uh, and this is, it, from what it appears, at least in these initial reports, was a very shallow earthquake. Yeah, um, Adam, uh, thank you so much. Get back yes, to work there. We'll get back to you momentarily. On the phone, mm -hmm. John Abel, a professor and research scientist at the Weston Observatory. Sir, thank you for jumping on the phone. It's early in this story. Uh, should people expect more tremors to follow, or how often do you get a one and done, sir? Uh, for an earthquake this large, I would expect there to be aftershocks that would be felt by people living within a um, few miles, perhaps a few tens of miles of the epicenter. If there, if there are larger aftershocks, say, say magnitude three to three and a half, and under normal circumstances, a uh, three and a half would be about the largest aftershock that we would expect to to see, with the most frequent aftershocks occurring within the next, say, 24 or 48 hours. But uh, uh, progressively deca decaying uh, number of aftershocks after that. Okay, came in at 4.8, went to 4.7. Apparently it's gone back to 4.8. Is that normal? Well, what happens is the very first number that comes out is an automated one from the computers, and then you want human beings to check them. And then what happens is uh, within minutes or, or maybe 10 minutes or so after the earthquake, then we can do more sophisticated analyses and actually get the best estimate of the magnitude. So that's why you'll see the magnitude fluctuate around over the, the first maybe 10, 20, 30 minutes. But by about 30 minutes after the earthquake, we have a good number. I'm wondering about what Adam Claus was just telling us about in terms of the, sh he said, the relative shallowness of this earthquake. Can you speak to that? Well, the earthquake, uh, USGS has put it at five point at 4.7 kilometers, uh, which is about, uh, you know, 2.8 miles or something down into the earth. And that's actually a pretty common uh, focal depth for earthquakes here along the eastern seaboard, somewhere between uh, maybe the surface and, and six or seven miles of depth is, is very common. So this is right in the middle of that. And the wide felt area is very common for earthquakes. In, in, okay. in, That's helpful in information, John. Thank sure you so is. much. Stand by, John. I'm Steve Ducey. I'm Brian Kilme. And I'm Ainsley Earhart. And click here to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page to catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis.